So this video wasn't even supposed to happen. So before I get into the details of why this video shouldn't even have happened in the first place, let's talk about this. This is a laser, as to be expected. I've done quite a few laser reviews on my channel, and a lot of those reviews have been for lasers that look very similar to this. This is an open gantry laser, and they are great. They are fantastic. They work really, really well. There are a couple small issues with them, especially when it comes to safety or the fact you have to wear the really stylish green safety glasses around them. But otherwise, they work really well. I'm not going to knock it for any of those reasons. And I also want to make a note that I've made a good part of my side hustle using these types of lasers. And they've been workhorses for the most part, and I've gone through several of them. And not because they weren't good or they wore out, just simply because I always have new ones to test, and it's usually the latest one that I end up putting into production and testing. This is the latest one that was sent to me by Orcher. This is a 20 watt open gantry laser, and this is the new entry for their Laser Master series. And this is the H10. But the reality of the matter is, I already have this laser. It was called the Laser Master 3, and it's right here. This laser was my workhorse for better part of a year. I ran hundreds of jobs with this laser. Tumblers, wood-based goods, MDF, pretty much everything, and it worked great. This model here was a special model that was upgraded from the 10 watt to the 20 watt module, and that was something that Orchur set me out as part of their upgrade program. My laser was a little bit different because I didn't have to go through the same upgrade process that a lot of other people did when they upgraded their Laser Master 3. And I think that's part of what went wrong here, is that their upgrade process for most people included the addition of a board that would have to sit on top here and made for kind of a messy process. It worked, and it worked well, but I don't think the customers were ultimately happy with it. And this is something that Orchard probably doesn't want me saying, but I think it is the reality of the situation. And I prefer to be upfront and honest about what happened there. And it's unfortunate because, like I said, this is a really good machine. Um, if it wasn't for getting some other lasers in that I had to test, I would probably still have this as my primary laser. So that we've established that, we could focus just on the H10. So the H10 is the next evolution and the next laser in the Laser Master series. And it does earn that title, although its differences between the Laser Master 3 are really not that significant, although there are some very important upgrades. So as far as size goes, the footprint of this is a tad bit smaller, at least for the working area. The Laser Master 3, especially with the 20 watt module, had a posted working size of about 380 millimeters by 380 millimeters. The H10 is 300 by 300. I'm not sure how much that loss of space will impact a lot of people's work. I don't think it will. In fact, I don't think I've ever run a job that was the actual size of a laser work area. And that's partially because of issues with acceleration where you really can't get very well at the edges, where there's not a lot of consistency. And this goes for every laser too, by the way. This is not just Orchur or open entry lasers. Almost every laser has that similar issue. So your actual work area tends to be a little bit smaller anyways. As far as other notable upgrades, this is a simpler construction. In fact, in the box, it was almost all put together except for the feet, mounting the bracket and the laser and a couple of wires. But the installation and everything to get up and running was really easy and really fast, probably within about 20 minutes um, for this. So in the box, in the standard box, you get basically your laser, the 20 watt module, and an air pump. If you like a honeycomb tray or one of the steel sheets, that is an additional purchase. And I would highly suggest getting that because it's it's needed. I actually have Orchur's version of their platform here that almost has like a knife edge. And I've become a really big fan of this. The channel cigarette also acts as a channel for getting the smoke um, away even though it's open gantry. It's not really being funneled away the same it would be with a class one laser anyways. The laser gantry is actually a little bit stiffer in the way that works. There's a lot less racking that could possibly happen and did actually happen every now and then with the Laser Master 3. That does not happen here anymore, especially once you get the initial setup done and the tensioning setup as well. 
Another notable upgrade are the limit switches. These have almost kind of a, a red button type limit switch that are pretty, pretty durable and, and beefy. And I think they might have also upgraded the motors. The motors themselves sound a lot quieter and they sound better. And if you've ever been around a lot of machines, you can tell when a motor sounds a higher quality compared to others. Um, I haven't looked at the actual details of it to see if it is different, but at least sounds different. And during the operation, everything was, was really solid um, for the machine. I've already ran several tests with the machine and it operated just as I would expect. I don't want to short sell or undersell the importance of that, but I've already done testing with a lot of 20 watt lasers, probably at least seven or eight at this point, and they all operate and produce images within what I would consider normal and expected within this range. Now, the last couple of videos I've been doing have been focusing on enclosed lasers, so class one lasers, and we're back to an open gantry laser right here, which I wasn't expecting to do. In fact, I wasn't looking at doing any more open gantry lasers, which is why this video really wasn't supposed to happen. But I'll tell you why it happened. My rep that I work with, it works as kind of like a middleman for Urchur, reached out to me and said they had a new laser for me to review. And it was a Laser Master H10. And I looked at it and stated, well, it looks about the same as the Laser Master 3. And my rep assured me, no, no, it's very different. It's very different. Based off the enthusiasm of my rep and saying that it was very different, I accepted the terms of the review and the laser and said I would do the video. Well, it's not that different. There are some very noticeable upgrades. There are some very noticeable improvements, but it's still not that different. Not different enough that knowing that going in, I would not have done the video. But I do these videos because I want them to be of value to you. So if you're looking for open gantry laser, which by the way, there are still some very good reasons to look at and even have an open gantry laser in your arsenal, which we'll talk about in a couple of minutes. So open gantry lasers are really going out of fashion, especially with the affordable class one lasers that have come out. But there are some things you can do with the open gantry that you can't do with an enclosed laser, such as this. This is a custom logo engraving into my wooden workbench that could only be done with an open gantry laser because, because I could go down closer to the surface and engrave it. I'm not limited by a case or anything else. So any larger object that you can't fit into a machine are going to be perfect for a open gantry. Workbenches, cornhole boards, even cement, which I'm not going to show here because I'm going to be doing another follow-up video showing me engrave some of my cement outside. But... This is definitely a point in the open gantry category. And that came out really cool. It is a very good laser. If you're looking for an entry level laser that is more cost effective than a lot of the more expensive class one lasers right now, it's not a bad way to get started. There is some initial inconvenience having to wear the glasses, but you can build an enclosure for this. In fact, I've seen people build beautiful enclosures for this. In fact, there's even plans available for some of those. Or Tur themselves sell a kind of a soft body case for this. And I've actually used that on occasion for some other lasers. And it works really well. There's a slight awkwardness to it, but it works. So if you're looking to get in at a lower cost, just to kind of get started and test things out, before you commit to a higher cost laser, which I think is a very, very important step for a lot of people, then I would actually go with Orchur. They've been around a long time. I think they've been a dependable company. I know that other people might have different experiences with them, but they've been around for a while for a reason. They've sold this many lasers for a reason. And for the ones that I've used, which this is the third Orchur that I've had in my possession, if I didn't have access to the other lasers and the other opportunities that I've had, I would still be using my Laser Master 3 or even my Alfero 2 that I had about a year or two ago. Different? Not really. But maybe that's a good thing because they got it right with the Laser Master 3 other than their upgrade program. But everything else is almost the same because it didn't need to be changed. It was that dependable of a laser as is this. If you made it this far in the video, I would really like to say Thank you, especially if you've been watching my videos over the years. 
I never intended to be a laser reviewer. I've enjoyed every moment of it. I've had some amazing opportunities to test some really cool lasers, and it's actually helped my business in some various ways. In fact, my wife is my primary partner with the side hustle and things that we do. In fact, I'm currently working on a video, I'm producing a video that's gonna talk about our laser business, what it is, how it's different from a lot of other people's that you see online, and some of the possible do's and don'ts, especially if you're looking at starting a so-called laser business. As always, we have a lot of videos in the back catalog, not just laser related ones that I think you'll enjoy. I will be getting back to a lot of the DIY and creative side of making in a very, very short time. Although a lot of them will involve lasers, but not necessarily just showcasing new lasers. A lot of it is just gonna be what you can do with them and the creativity that we should be kind of bringing forward um, in our space and not getting so hung up just on the hardware, but also what we're making. Although I do have one more review coming out that I'm just kind of waiting on the machine right now, but that is currently my last laser review. Um, I also have one other accessory I'll be looking at, but then I'm looking at possibly calling it quits in terms of the laser review with one asterisk next to things, but maybe I'll talk about that at another time and why. But. Once again, thank you. Um, if you like the channel, if you'd like to support the channel, then go ahead and check us out on Patreon. We have quite a few people there on the site and that number is growing all the time and changing. I'm trying to post as much as I can with articles and value and files and downloads and all of that. It's been a little bit slow lately because a work schedule has been a little bit hectic, but I do have quite a few things that are almost ready to post, but they will be up there soon. So go ahead and check that out when you have a chance. Also check out geekbuilders.net. That is my actual official site. It has info and other little tidbits that you might find useful. And that is also growing and going through some changes as well. Take care. I hope you enjoy this hobby. I hope you enjoy what you're making. Don't forget to design, make, and play. And I'll see you next time.